I'm just so beyond honored to be something that she's painted, you know? Like, it's so exciting! <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm gonna start this really weird. Okay. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, okay, that was dumb. <laughs> just edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hi. I got it. I got it. Hi. Okay, great. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Super Ray Dizzle. We all know and love her. But do we all really know her? Today, we're going on a deep dive, exposing the depths of the Ray behind the Super Dizzle. Subscribe to her. Unless she's not good. We'll find out. It's been like three years or something like that. It's been longer than that. Was it February when we met? I think so for February Playlist Live, yeah. 2019. I genuinely feel like an entire different person since Me then. Me too. And I feel like a hundred years has passed. Even though it's only been four, like it genuinely feels like it's been two decades or something. Cause like so much has changed on your end. Oh yeah. And I feel probably the exact same for you. Things have changed a lot actually. Moves and relationships, career stuff has changed a lot. Same here. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> so that was one of my like questions. I guess we could do like a actual intro kind of moment. A few moments later. Super Ray Dizzle, welcome to my I'm channel. honored to be here. I was thinking that I wanted to do a portrait of someone and I was like, well, who do I want to spend time painting? You came to mind. And so for like six months or something, I've been working on this portrait and I feel like the rounding out of it is getting to talk to you and getting to know you. And see, on my end, I have always, always, always admired you as a painter. You know that, because I've always nice. blown smoke up your ass. But whenever you told me that you wanted to paint me, I was blown away because I'm like, me? Really? Like, you know? I'm excited to ask you questions and get to Well, I'm excited to answer. 2023 Ray. You were 20. Eight now? I'm 29. Yeah, 29. I'm about to turn 30 in July. Nice. We're very close in age. When we met back then, back in 2019, I was kind of curious if you could take us back to that time, what you were like. During that time, I was laser focused on just YouTube and just pure numbers. I was dealing with a lot of anxiety. I didn't even know how to treat it or handle it or even recognize it at the time. I had just come out of a situation where I was immensely poor. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest here. Anybody who's been below the poverty line knows how tough and honestly like traumatizing it really is. For a long time on YouTube, I was really afraid that it was all going to go away tomorrow. The reality was is that my YouTube channel was starting to kick off. Just the anxiety of it, I couldn't shake it off. It's really hard for me to look back past 2020. I was coping in such awful ways. I think whenever we met, I was just so hyper-focused on numbers and I cringe when I look back at myself, honestly, because I was just so hyper-focused on what's going to be the most successful that I wasn't making content I felt was true and honest to myself. I was just like, yeah, equating my value as a person strictly to numbers. I remember you being anxious at the time. The anxiety I saw with you was like surrounding filming time, like to do collaborative stuff. Do you feel like that was linked in with high stakes performance of what you were doing and how you were approaching it? You know, I have a couple of like chronic illnesses and I didn't put my body first. I was just strictly working on content first. And because I had such a crazy, uh, hectic sleep schedule, because I was like binge eating at the time, because I was just having days where I was so anxious, I was like paralyzed in bed, had a hard time scheduling things because I never knew what day I was going to be good, what day I was going to be physically well enough to be able to have those days of filming. You had some pretty strong goals around that time. I'm curious like what your settling point was with that stuff. It seems like you found some in-between kind of place. Yeah, what's that look like now? Well, around 2020, I really took quarantining a very, I took it really serious. I wanted to set an example for myself and my viewers and my family, you know, to stay home. I had a lot of free time to just evaluate myself and just take a moment and be like, 
what, are, what am I doing? I'm not happy. I'm chronically sick. I hate to admit this, but I was having like mental breakdowns frequently. During that time, I just had a lot of self-evaluation of like, why am I working so hard if I'm miserable? It was a really hard pill for me to swallow that I can't be superwoman. <laughs> but for me, my list is like solve world hunger. Today I'm gonna be the queen of England. You know, I have very, very high expectations for myself. And when I wouldn't meet them, they would destroy me. At the end of the day, there's no super Ray Dizzle without Ray. And, and I don't think that's honestly what I wanted. I wanna be able to live my life and enjoy it. I don't wanna have to like be in this constant, just like work, 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 work. I need to step back and focus on quality versus quantity and making myself happy. How did you manage all of that? And like, what did it look like to make those changes? I'm a huge viewer of YouTube casually in my free time. And I think everybody can agree that they enjoy quality content that gives value over quantity. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some very successful channels on YouTube who focus quantity over quantity. Yeah, it's like daily uploaders. I can't do that. That's just yeah. not me. <laughs> Especially with artwork, you know, it can take like weeks for us to just get one piece down. You know, I did a video where I painted an item from the Sistine Chapel on my wall. And that was like the mental drainage and concentration that that video took alone. But the outcome was really great. And a lot of the people who watched that video really appreciated it. Yeah, I think I just showed myself that it's okay to not have to whip out videos every five seconds. It's okay to focus on, this sounds silly, but my legacy of the videos. Okay, occasionally I'll do like a, you know, like an art hack video or something that's silly, but I always wanna try to make it worth watching. And I think my audience can see that. I spend more time editing now and I spend more time with B-roll and fancy shots and I spend more time with the actual theme of the videos. And I think that's contributed to why, you know, people want to stick around. From my perception, it seems like things are really on track for you. I mean, congratulations, you got a house. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to hear that you found balance of things. I can re relate to a lot of the things that you said went on in your personal life. The little detail that I picked up on of your sleep schedule how much it was impacted when i was like in my highest swing of things on youtube really didn't value sleep and i would sacrifice you know full nights working like a 36 hour shift to get a video out i think that really does show to have an impact over time when you're devaluing yourself in that way it's hard yeah and it's like you can kind of burn hot and right doing that sometimes but you have to think about the longer term impacts of what you want and what makes you happy exactly <laughs> that's another realization that i had come to is that i can't keep going down this road because i can't even get another video out a week because i'm like so exhausted how am i going to do this for another decade you know mm -hmm. and so that's why i think boundaries are so important with this job i was curious if you ever do projects that are kind of more to yourself outside of what we see on film. I used to love doing art when I was like in college. I would, you know, turn off all the lights except for my lamp and I would put on my podcast and I would just get really into the zone and I would just make it. And if it was bad, it was bad and I would just move on. Now, when I make artwork, it's strictly for the camera. Like I want to make something good that my audience will like, that I will like. And don't get me wrong, I obviously, you know, love to do art. It's my favorite thing ever. and. Is, it's just different now. I, I would say I have a very rich life outside of YouTube and in my interpersonal mind, you know. I'm learning French right now. Um, I'm <laughs> focusing on traveling at least, you know, three times a year. Um, I have a house now, so I like to, I love to decorate and I love to go shopping. I'm working on my fitness right now. So every morning I wake up and I go for a jog and I try to work on getting these muscles big. Focusing on my health uh, as far as like nutrition goes. Um, I really enjoy like uh, beauty. I like to change up my hair. As far as like work projects go, I think right now, I have a couple of things right now, but I would prefer to keep them a secret. Do you have any random personal goals? Really, really am working on my French. Like I would love to spend a lot of time in French or French in France. That's always been my dream. I've never gone international, but that's going to, I'm actually going to Ireland this uh, this year and then after that it's gonna be France and I want to spend a lot of time there and I want to make sure my French is like 
Magnifique. My boyfriend is, he's always wanted to go. And like I said, we both have never gone international. And so it's gonna be our 10 year anniversary coming up. Oh, and yeah, thank you guys. It's been a long road. I can't believe we've been together for, since we were 20 years old, that's crazy. I went to France, um, I went to the Louvre. And is that part of the a draw for you? For going Oh, you to know it 1,000%. That's yeah. like one of my top things. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do in this lifetime is look at old art, you know? I cool. love it. There's been three times in my life where I've had like show-stopping moments. The first mm -hmm. one was my first kiss. The whole world stopped. Aww. The second one is the first time I ever saw my nephew. Like literally it was magic. And then the third time was the first time I ever saw Frida Kahlo. Oh my gosh, it was the most incredible thing ever. Those are cute moments, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> what are your feelings on piercings and tattoos? Do you have plans for any? I accidentally gave myself a tattoo when I was filming a video. <laughs> like a stab with a pencil or something? No, no, I did a video where I tried like a $20 tattoo gun from Amazon oh. and I got like the fake tattoo skin to practice on and I was gonna do a whole video on it. I was doing a Snapchat to one of my friends. As I was recreating what happened, I accidentally uh, stabbed myself and gave myself with a tattoo. And so now I have this little random dot forever. <laughs> my therapist says that I do have OCD tendencies and one of my OCD tendencies includes cleanliness. So I think if I was to ever get a piercing, I don't think I would ever be able to let it heal properly because I would just be constantly like cleaning it, you know? Do you have so any piercings at all? Mm -mm. Oh, no, interesting. I, and don't get me wrong, if you have tattoos and piercings, I think that's awesome. I think they look badass and cool. Like, I wish that well, I you, could. Because you're, you're, you've got your, like, little edge to you and all your emo scenes pics from growing up, so I was kind of curious. You're straight edge when it comes to piercings <laughs> and tattoos. What is it, uh, Green Day? Do you remember they used to have, like, the heart grenade, like, symbol for their, uh -huh. like, American Idiot album? I wanted a tramp stamp. <laughs> Oh I wanted a tramp stamp three day on my back, and I'm so glad I never got it. Like, I think some tramp stamps look absolutely like they accentuate the body beautifully. I wanted a Green Day one just because I was 14 and thought I was gonna be a huge Green Day fan forever, you know? When I was a kid, I like, wanted to do like piercings and tattoos. I remember asking yeah. my parents if I could get like a like a wallet chain i like wanted to be all edgy yeah. but um i was like <laughs> brought up super conservative and it was just mm -hmm. like within the last number of years that i'm like breaking the barriers of getting my tattoos and piercings now i related a lot to you in that sense because yeah. i also grew up not as conservative as you but yeah same situation with very religious parents and um, I feel like we both have an alignment in the sense that we had to break off and essentially find who we are. I've heard a lot of points in your story that I relate to, and I think it's also kind of part of like the experience of this work being in this job, which is kind of like part of our generation's mm -hmm. job force. There's so many people going into the world of online creation or self-entrepreneurship. I want to be involved with YouTube, but I want to prioritize making more of my income off of like paintings. Back in the early phases and like closer to when I met you, mm -hmm. YouTube was very high demand nine to five. That wasn't really a nine to five. Like YouTube was the bread and butter though for me. It was similar to like what you were talking about when we met where you were doing all right, but like you had all the fear of not doing all right. When I was like letting go of some of my ties to YouTube that I was like just panicking so hard. Nothing financially was like devastating me or anything. I just felt like mm -hmm. my whole life was gonna fall apart. Like I said, because there's no financial or job security to it, it, it just feels like there's a monster behind you, you know, at all times just being like, if you don't do this, you're gonna fail. Five years ago, we were like doing the most similar, I feel like in our careers, like what our goals were and the type of type and frequency of stuff we were making. It's interesting how we've like sorted it in our own ways. And I, I'm sure in the next five years, it'll be interesting to see where we're at oh, in yeah. trajectories. Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be something, man. I had a couple questions that I haven't asked you. Oh, I'm an open book. You can ask me anything. <laughs> the ones we have left were advice for a young Ray, what gift you'd give your reincarnated self, and <laughs> basically anything to know you better. The first thing that I would do to young Ray is shake her violently and be like, why are you so dumb? Traumatize your younger self. <laughs> What's happening? 
I yeah, I have not made acceptance yet with my past self because, like I said, I still cringe. I'm like, girl, what like, makes I'm you so cringe? Happy. Just like how you were trying. Uh, yeah, I was trying so hard to be like Tana Mojo. <laughs> I was trying to be like Tana Mojo kind of thing, like turn like her loud story times into like art somehow because mm. I just, I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have any confidence in myself. So I'd replicate what I would see, you know, until you can learn what you're doing. And so, yeah, I was not myself. And I was just like screaming at the camera. And I remember people would comment, like leave comments, like, Ray, are you drunk? <laughs> Because I would be so loud and, and unhinged and out of pocket, you know? And so I would definitely go back to myself and say, like, just, it, it's going to be all right, you know, to take some time and just evaluate your anxiety. Because that has been overwhelmingly a, a huge problem throughout my entire life. Even as far back as I can remember, I've always had anxiety. So just calm down. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Yeah. I hate to get too personal, but for those of you who don't know, my brother passed away in 2017 at a very young age through a car accident. And after that, I really had a lot of anxiety. Like I had a very huge realization that life could be taken away at any point in time. I guess that contributed to like the trauma of why I needed to be as successful as possible right here, right now, because life could end, you know? So I need to do as much as I can right now. You don't have to do every single thing because if it's your time, it's your time. You're never gonna know. That's something you just can't control. I remember you used to say that you wanted to go super hard on what you were doing so that you could retire yourself more young and then like spend your retirement working as an artist or just doing, mm -hmm. you know, what you want with that. Is that still kind of a mentality you have? I've, since I've been so consistent on YouTube, I feel like I'm at a place where I'm financially secure and I'm able to, you know, if YouTube was to go away tomorrow, you know, I've been very smart with my money. And I think, again, that's out of, you know, the poverty that I faced. In reality, I am beyond frugal. And so buying a house and saving my money has put a lot of ease to me that if YouTube was to go away tomorrow, um, I would probably still make you, I would definitely still make YouTube videos. I would still definitely make TikToks and stuff because I, it's just ingrained in me. I've been doing it since 2009. I'd probably pursue another career somehow um, in another field of like maybe psychology or something. I don't know. <laughs> More open to like what the world gives you and time gives you now. I think you have to be because I just wanted to control everything, control my outcomes, control my YouTube channel. Like no human can do that. What would you tell or give a reincarnated version of yourself? Do you remember that episode of Futurama where Fry had like um, a couple of, he had some money in the bank and then like a thousand years later, he had like a giant bank account. That's what I would do. I'd give myself like five bucks in like 10,000 years, go cash it out or something. It's cool that you said you've done really well with saving and investing. Friends and family, like they're always calling me really, really cheap and stuff, but I do not care. Like, you know, I will- well, like, You've been sometimes... working hard for years and you're just gonna barely take that trip international. A lot of people are like growing and hitting numbers like you do and then they're going on trips. When I hit my good year on YouTube, I was like going on lots of trips internationally. <laughs> now I'm taking a little step back from it. But <laughs> that leads to another deeper discussion about like how things appear versus what they actually are on social mm -hmm. media because mm -hmm. I think that happens with a lot of young YouTubers. They see a lot of success very quickly and then they don't they can't comprehend that it can it can go away and i think that and then on the other end as a consumer of that content i feel like it leads to a lot of inadequacy because you're seeing these kids just come up from nothing and then they're spending like nothing and it makes you as a consumer feel bad because it's like you get the fear of left out you know phone was yeah. a big motivator i feel like so the last question was if there's just anything you could tell us or someone who would want to get to know you better viewing, what would that be? Watch Super Ray Dizzle on YouTube. No, kidding. Um, I guess that I'm just a person who has a lot of anxieties and, you know, I've gone through a lot and I've overcome it. And when it comes to what I've put out into the world, I just want it to be valuable, worth your while. I want to be able to make sure my audience has the best that I can give them. And I always want to spread creativity and I always want to be able to help beginners and inspire people. Heck yeah, that was perfect. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, catching up with us. I will be sending you a painting. Maybe oh, we'll I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I cannot wait. It's going to be 
great. I cannot okay. wait. Okay. Hi. I have not seen this yet. I'm so excited to see it. I've admired Robin for a very long time and I've admired her art for an even longer time and her artistic journey for so long. And I'm just so beyond honored to be something that she's painted, you know? <laughs> Thank you, Super Ray Dizzle. Jarvis base, but I can see like, bro. Oh, I'm so overwhelmed right now. Like real talk, like not even just filming for like YouTube. As a person, I need to collect myself. Oh my God. This is insane. The color theory. The blending, the strokes, the subject matter. <laughs> like these are just so incredible. God damn, she is such a good artist. Holy shit. <laughs> First of all, to be that brave, to be able to like put the brush strokes directly over the subject matter, that's like 4D chess. No, she had a book. When did she get a book? This is why I shouldn't have deleted Instagram because I'm not updated with anything. Oh my God, that is so awesome. Robin, these are just out of this world. I mean, my God. I am so honored to be a subject matter that you've painted. You, you have no idea. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. This is such an amazing, magical experience. I love it. And by the way, you better believe that this is gonna be hung up over my bed. That way I can stare at myself all the time. Oh my God. Thank you so much for having me. I had a lot of fun and I'm really honored and glad. So thank, thank you. Let's catch up sooner than five years, probably. <laughs> all right, sounds good. We'll do two and a half. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> <Not me. laughs> I want to say thank you to Ray. Obviously, I was joking earlier, you should subscribe to her. Go find her at Super Ray Dizzle on YouTube and TikTok, all those platforms. Also, thank you to you for watching this. If you enjoyed this type of content, I would love to know if I should try it again with someone else. Who? Or, you know, am I a fool? You could say that too. If you want to get a print of this, I'm going to be selling them on robinsealark.com where I also sell original paintings and have links to things like my book and soon my merch, which I was wearing throughout this video. Check me out at Robin Sealark on YouTube, Patreon, Instagram, other platforms. I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe. Okay, bye. Oh, like this video too. That'd be nice. Okay, bye.